Hi and welcome, Todd Cahill. You're listening to the It's Not Out There, But It's In You podcast. We're on this podcast, we talk all about the battles that we all face in our life and really how the battles that we face affect us and how we can think differently about each battle and start redefining its meaning so we can start relinquishing its power over us. See, it's a choice you have to make every day to become the best you. So we want to help you return to the battle at hand, the issues that you face, redefine what their meanings are, and then repeat the cycle over and over in order to keep winning the battle that you face. So stay tuned. So glad you're here. Thanks for listening. Hey, and welcome. This is Todd Kale, and you are listening to the podcast. It's not out there. It's in you. And uh, really excited for you listening in today. Thanks so much for your time. And I'm so excited to share today episode six, and it is going to be a good one. It is about promises. How many of you out there have a hard time keeping your promises? Uh, say I. I do as well. And there's a real battle here of trying to maintain order in your life while trying to be the best parent, but trying to be the best husband, trying to be the best wife, and trying to also be the best you that you can be in keeping promises to yourself. And I see a lot of people not keeping promises to, the, to themselves, but everyone else, and they neglect their health, they neglect their well-being. So again, today is we're going to dive into this. And again, thank you so much for listening. Um, I'm excited. Uh, you know, obviously it's a new year, and this is a good one because uh, resolutions are high. You know, it's still January, and people are probably saying, you know, I want to, I want to stay committed to my promise to myself of being in the gym, and I want to be committed to my promise of, you know, staying committed to whatever their New Year's resolution is. And I think if I can take you on a little bit of a journey here on how to help you be a better promise keeper. Um, I think it's going to be just even a better year for you um, and me because we, let's face it, we all have a, a major challenge keeping our promises. And uh, on a side note, I'm really excited because I'm going to be going through battle eight of this book that I wrote, You Versus You, which comes out on retail. Uh, you can pre-order yourself a copy right now on Amazon. It comes out February 19th, so I'm excited about that. It's been definitely a three and a half, four year plus passion project of um, just writing and getting it out and, and, and promoting and, and you know making sure that this book uh, gets out in the hands of you. And I just, uh, my, my prayer is that adds value to you, massive value to you, that you can really start winning these battles. And maybe you are winning some of them. Maybe you are winning your health right now. Maybe you're winning your relationships, but you're losing your finances. Or maybe you're winning your finances, but you're losing your health. And I believe there's 12 battles that I've outlined in this book. And today I want to go through the you versus your promises, right? So I believe that this one definitely is not easy to keep. It's not easy to keep your promises. Uh, like I said, especially if you're a parent, especially if you're a husband, a wife, and you know, just, just have that busy life. I mean, a lot of us live in America, and if you don't live in America, maybe you live in another country listening in. You know, I'm telling you, it's just this go, 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 right? It's just like, go, go, go. As soon as you wake up, it's go, 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 flight, flight or flight, right? It's like, okay, what do I got to do? What do I got to do? I got to say this. I, I, I promised my son. Okay. I, oh, I forgot. Oh, shoot. I forgot. Oh, I'm going to be home late. Sorry. Um, oh, I have, you know, in, in the more that I've been an entrepreneur, the more that I've seen, you know, throughout the years, people are more flaky than ever. Um, it's like, Hey, you're going to be here at five. And, and, and they're, they, and then they cancel last minute. And I've been guilty of that many times, of course, especially when you're dealing with your maybe dentist or something you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'll make it up and maybe you cancel and you just don't want to be. So we, we, we kind of live in this life where we make the promise. It sounds great at that time that we make it sure. I'll, I'll be there. Or, hey, I'll, you can count on me. But when the actual time comes, can we really count on me? Right. You know, can we really count on you? So, we all know talk is cheap. Okay. And we all know that we shouldn't, you know, you know, just promise we need to prove. So for me, I, I would like to ask you on this podcast is what are some qualities that you want to emulate in some of the people that you admire? I want you to think about that. The people that you admire, the people that you really look up to, 
that really keep their promises, what are some qualities uh, about that? What, what When people do, when you actually meet somebody that really is right on time and they really do, you know, say they're going to call you when they actually call you or they actually call you when they say they're going to call you. And, they, and what does that do for you, that quality of keeping your word? Um, what does it do for that relationship? I'm sure it strengthens, it strengthens your relationship. It makes you uh, more trust that person. Um, how many times have you maybe let people down um, and maybe you didn't know that, know it at the time, but then found out, you know, maybe they've held a grudge, you know, maybe you've done it a few times and they're, you know, too kind or too nice to say anything, but maybe later on they finally tell you the truth why they've been holding a grudge or maybe don't hang out with you anymore. Maybe it's a friendship or relationship and stuff like that. So keeping our promises is very, very important. And I'd like to kind of start by just asking, what if you were able to write down the areas of your life in which you talk a good game, but don't play a good game? <laughs> what are some areas in your life that you do talk? Like, okay, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, but maybe you don't do it as well as you think you should or think you do. You know, as always, I think getting honest and then making the necessary changes that we all need in order to become a person of action, not a person of many words. And, uh, you know, I'm, of course, guilty of this. And, and, and I've seen this in so many different aspects of my life. But being an entrepreneur now for, you know, geez, uh, 15 years, um, I've seen people come and go into, you know, becoming an entrepreneur. And I've seen people say, hey, I, I've had people walk up to me and say, I'm going to I'm gonna make you rich, man. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do so well here. You're going to make so much money off my efforts. And, of course, I don't believe anyone that just talks that. And, of course, they're gone the next day or, you know, I try calling them back and, Maybe it was like at a meeting or something and they saw like a presentation and they're like, that was amazing and I'm just going to go out there and crush this business. And then, you know, like 24 hours later, they talk to their wife or, you know, they, they get one rejection and they're out, they're done, they're, they're gone. And I just, for me, I just never wanted to be that person where just talks a big game. I never wanted to be the person that says, you know, I'm just going to crush this business or I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to be an author and I'm just going to do it and and then not stick to it. And I got to tell you, like writing a book and getting it out there and even doing this podcast, it is a commitment. And of course, at first, like, yeah, you know, I'll do a podcast. That's cool. You know, I, I get the, but you know, you got to like sit down and record it and stuff. Like you got to like prepare, you got to like mentally be ready to you know, share, you know, and and get ready for it. And, you know, it definitely is a commitment. And when you promise something, it's not just a promise, it's an act. It's not just like, hey, you know, I promise, I promise, I promise, I'll, I'll, I'll do better, I promise. But obviously changed behavior is the greatest apology. And, you know, and, and also uh, understanding when you are wrong and apologizing and taking full responsibility, but then not doing it again. Um, so just, you know, for me, I want to start out just like maybe start getting your mind to think, um, you know, Talk is cheap. And how many times have me and you failed at that? You know, you and I have failed at that, of course, many, many times. Now, here's the deal. Um, I also believe that there are people that do not want to disappoint anyone. So you might say, you know, Todd, look, I get it, man. I I, I don't want to disappoint people. I I do overpromise and underdeliver only because my intentions are good. I don't want to upset anyone, and I have a hard time saying no. And that's really one of my, I guess, New Year's resolutions or something that I'm really self-aware of in 2019 that I don't want to keep saying yes to everybody. And yes, I'll do that. And yes, I'll do this. And yes, I'll be there. And yes, I understand that's a family event. I'll be there. I, you know, family's important. And even with like family events, like I can't be at all family events. I can't be at all, you know, my wife's side or my side, whatever it is. Like, even though like, of course, family comes first and everything, but like, Sometimes I've got to work, you know, sometimes I have to hold my other promise to what I promised other people too. So I have to be really, really good this year. And I know you do too at really just making sure that you can manage what you promise, make sure you can really manage it all and kind of manage yourself and knowing what you're capable of and knowing what you're not capable of. So I really want to encourage you stop being all things to all people. 
how many of you out there can really relate to that? It's like you don't want it. You are a people pleaser. You don't want to not please anyone, and you want to be there for your church event. You want to be there for a cookie bake day. You want to be there for your kids' recital, of course. You want to be there for your so- your kids' soccer practice, of course, right? That's what a good parent does. You also want to be there for on that conference call and for your maybe your company uh, event um, on a Saturday. Maybe they have a special company event, but you're supposed to go to your kids' soccer game, and you're trying to do both, and it's across town, and you also have to do laundry that day. You have to you know, your house is a wreck, and you also made a promise to your spouse that you're clean up, and because you don't want to spend money on maybe a maid or something, because at the t- at maybe right now you versus your finances is not, you know, you're you're not looking so hot. So you want to try to save the money. So how many of you can relate to that? And you you just can't make everyone happy. It's just we've heard it so many times. You just can't. So you know maybe take a moment. You know, even write down, you know, if you're working out, if you're on the treadmill or something, I understand, but maybe go back to this podcast and just take a moment to write down the people in, in areas of your life, okay, in the areas of your life that you are currently overcommitted to. What are you might, is there anything in your life that you just are overcommitted to that you've committed too much and it's just taken too much time, it's taken too much stress, um, you know, to, to even, not even doing it, but just thinking about it. How many of you ever laid at bed at night just thinking about the promises that you've made? And as I record this, I can think of a, a half a dozen of promises that I've made right now that I'm like, oh, I kind of wish I didn't do that. But I know that if I didn't do it, my kids or maybe my spouse or friends or colleagues would be disappointed in me. So it really, okay, it's like, well, Todd, like, okay, well, talk to me about that. How do I not disappoint people? Well, here's the deal. I'm going to go through different uh, different things here on this, but take, take a moment, like I said, write down the people in, 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 in areas of your life that you are currently overcommitted to, then make a plan to right size those overcommitments. Put simply, do the right thing. So what can you do to do the right thing, Okay. So in my book, um, I do three, we'll call it the, really the three R's. So I'm going to return. Uh, the first one is a, re- a return. So let, let's just return to what this is all about, the current reality. Like we have to understand what this means. Commitment is an act, not a word. Okay. So y'all in agreement with that? Okay. We're good. Okay. Now that's not always the easiest thing to talk about. Now commitment is an act, not a word. How many marriages are ending up in divorce nowadays? What is it, 50, 60%? I don't know the statistics. And I, I know that it gets worse in your second marriage and then third marriage. And you got to know what this means. Because if you're, and, and I was just watching um, The Bachelor, uh, you know, last night with my wife. And, and you know, they've had a, a pretty good, uh, I don't know the statistics even on The Bachelor. Maybe it's 50-50 or something. But uh, of course, if you watch the show and, I'm married, so if you're if you're a dude listening to this, you're like, well, you're watching The Bachelor. Uh, that's really weird, man. <laughs> Why am I listening to this guy? Um, well, I'm married, so uh, my wife loves it. So I watch what my wife loves. I mean, hello, you know, that's commitment, okay? Well, that's not, that, that that that's how you're committing to this, right? Um, you know, this whole marriage thing, right? So you know, she loves it, and I kind of roll my eyes half the time, and half the other time, I'm kind of like intrigued by it, right? And it's just interesting how America looks at marriage. It's just, and I was talking to my wife about it, when, you know, oh, you know, it's, it is it is beautiful, obviously, the falling in love part, right? You know, think about, you know, maybe your first love or thinking about maybe even the spouse you're married to now and just how you fell in love, that whole process of, oh my gosh, does he like me? And she, does she like me? And oh my gosh, this is so amazing. And oh, I, I just, I'm so in love, you know, like that movie Elf with Will Ferrell. I'm in love. I mean, I don't care if anyone knows, like he just comes in and just shouts that he's in love, right? And that's really what, what love looks like in the beginning. It's these baby steps of love and it's just this, she just can't do anything wrong and she's just perfect. And literally, I didn't think anyone was going to be perfect in the world, but she's perfect, right? And um, and then, of course, the planning, the engagement, just like in The Bachelor, and it's just like tears are flowing and it's the most happy moment in both of your life. And of course, the woman, this is what she's been dreaming about since she was a little girl and the princess dresses and, you know, growing up princess in her daddy's eyes and she couldn't do any wrong in her daddy's eyes. And then, you know, this, this, this strong man comes and sweeps her off. Right. And just like in the Disney movies, right. And the princesses get swept off by this strong man. 
and and of course nowadays princess princesses can get swept by other princesses and uh, strong men can get swept by other strong men. So hey, you know it's I'm talking about any relationship here, okay? Um, but just think about that, right? And then you get swept up on your feet, and it's just this oh. What? I would never do anything wrong. I am so committed to you, baby. And then, of course, the wedding day. It's just magical. It's just everyone turns out and everyone shows up and the food is perfect and the dancing is perfect. And oh, and the father-daughter dance is just incredible. It's insane. And, and, and just like even for my wedding, it was magical. And it really was. It was a wonderful day. And my wife surprised me. And she was getting dance lessons behind behind my back. But that's okay in a good way. Um, just with her and her dad. And it was something special that her dad wanted to do. And then she just kind of changed out of her uh, her wedding dress and put on another dress. And nobody even knew other than them two. And they were doing all these uh, special dances. And it was just – it was really amazing. It was a magical day. And our wedding was just spectacular. And then you you get you know whatever we had a Rolls Royce and we just kind of you know was swept out in the Ro- Rolls Royce and everyone was cheering you know as we left the uh, at night and everyone had these light things that were going off and we're just like you know wow okay I guess we're married now. <laughs> Twenty four hours later, it's like uh okay so what do we do right we're married and then of course it's like. No more people are there. You know, the bachelor's over, like in the show. Like, you know, nobody, the crowd's not there anymore. They moved on. You're engaged. But now you got to do life. Now you got to commit. You're committed now. You are doing the do. So, how many of you, uh, you know, know, what that means, especially in a marriage, it's like, okay, you know, I'll do the laundry today and you don't do it. Um, I'll do the dishwasher and then you don't do it. Or you, you're you dirty and you, you're not committed to change that and you're not committed to what your spouse wants. And again, this is not about so much you versus your relationships, but again, all of this is about relationships if you, if you, because really a relationship, you, you know, um, you know, investing in relationships is, is this is how you get a return on your relationships is keeping your promises, right? So I, we live in an infinite world, you know, and in, in, in insatiable society, there's always more to do, say, think, and plan. And the, and, and the result of this is inevitably is feeling overwhelmed. So how many of you really feel overwhelmed, you know, with, with just the life that you have sometimes? And we are each finite human beings with finite energy and abilities attempting to get through an infinite amount of work, the social pressure, okay, to do it all at work, at home. Um, And I really, you know, speak on this because it's just like, you know, having it all. Yes, you could truly have it all, but you have to be an incredible master planner. You have to be able to say no. There's so much pressure on all of us. But at the same time, it is mathematically impossible to do it all. So why do we keep agreeing to do the things that we say we're going to do? Why are we constantly trying to be all things to all people, right? And th- th- there's a lot of implications uh, of overextension. How many of you feel like you've been overextended recently? And it's very ugly. What are some of the impl- uh, implications of overextension? Well, physically, you can get overextended physically, mentally, emotionally, okay? Uh, it's detrimental. It's things like uh, which, which causes that is, you know, some of the results of, of being overextended that are detrimental are things like depression, uh, sleep problems, diabetes, anxiety, inflammatory disease, which are not far behind the overcommitted person who is burning the candle at both ends. But here's one of the harshest implications that I want to share with you on this podcast today. How many of you feel this one? This one is the harshest of all of the implications is shame. How many of you feel shame when you can't keep your promise? It's just like this shame that comes over you. And and maybe people have shamed you for not keeping your promise, right? They felt like, you know what? Uh, You know, they, they don't trust you now and you feel so bad. And it's like, I didn't even do anything. You know, I have all the best intentions. I can't help it. I mean, I, I had to go pick up Johnny from the soccer practice. Then I had to go on the other end of town and pick up, you know, Sally from her recital. And then I had to come home. I had to make food. I had to hurry up and put food on the table. Then I had to go pick up the other son from basketball practice. And then the husband, my husband wanted to 
to, you know, eat and, and the food was not hot. And he, I promised him that this wouldn't happen next time. Oh, you know, oh, I feel so shame, right? The feeling that you deserve the panic and stress and exhaustion because you're the one that promised to do all of it in the first place. So it's kind of like being the mayor of crazy town. You know, what, what, what keeps you agreeing to pile more and more and more onto your already full plate? You know, what's, what's behind the need to not only do everything, but to do everything well? In my non-expert opinion, over-promising has two main underlying culprits. One is control and the other is people-pleasing. So it's either, you know, we have to be in full control. So we control our schedule, we control our promises, and there's a lot of obviously control people out there. Maybe you're one of them. You know, maybe type A's, that's what I'm referring to. Uh, people who desire control are also lovingly, okay, referred to type A's, control freaks, obsessive, compulsive, or perfectionists. If you want something done right, you have to do it yourself. It's not your fault that you're naturally responsible and organized and therefore the obvious choice to save the world. Look at you, you know, look at you. And you, and you, and the other thing I would say about that is you also expect a, a lot of the times for other people to be just like you. And that's where, especially in a marriage and a relationship, it's like, oh my gosh, it's like, that's where like the whole Disney marriage kind of falls apart, you know, a week later after you realize your wife is a control freak and she wants to control everything that you do. And you're just like totally the opposite or vice versa. Okay. Like, it's not your fault that you're naturally responsible and organized, right? And therefore, the obvious choice is to save the world. But you can handle it. You can handle anything. You make promises because you're the only one who can compatibly follow through and slay the task at hand. Nobody can do a better job than you can because you are the man. You are the woman. I'm more than willing to admit that does describe some people that I do know. <laughs> People pleasers, what about this one, <clears throat> can be described as accommodating, obligatory, doormatish, or agreeable. People pleasers can be described as accommodating, obligatory, doormat. You like that word? Doormatish. <laughs> you know, you're a doormat. <coughs> and um, you are ready to serve, right? Or agreeable. You want to make people happy, and they're happy when you do what you say you're going to do. You're just such a people pleaser. Maybe you're told you need to stick up for yourself more. Hey, man, you need to stick up for yourself. You, you always do what everyone else wants you to do. Yeah, but you know what? I just love people. You know, I'm a people person. I just really want to serve everybody. Maybe you're told you need to stick up for yourself more, but you can't help that your love language is acts of service. So you do it for everyone else because that's your love. That's your uh, love language. Or maybe your love language is words of affirmation. Since you thrive on feeling accepted through verbal appreciation after you go out of your way to do something, even when it is inconvenient, okay, or, or an inconvenience. So how many of you am I describing here? <clears throat> how many of you would agree, that's me? That's me, Todd. I, man, what do I do about that? Well, you know what? Overcommitment is a real struggle. And, you know, despite my two theories that I've ta I talked about, I'll agree that sometimes we bite off more than we can chew as an innocent overestimation. And we do. We're guilty of it. I do it. I do it probably more than anyone I do know. Um, and it, especially when it comes to finance, financials. Uh, I tend to in my past, and I tend to a lot because I am a futuristic person. You know, you versus your future. I, I can see the future. And I'm like, okay, well, this makes sense to pay this. This makes sense to pay this. I'm going to do really well in my business in the future. So that'll make up for that financial. <clears throat> and what I've done is I've overextended myself. And I've, I've done that a lot. And that has caused you know, some even, you know, arguments and stuff like that, even with my, in my marriage, I'm like, yeah, uh, yeah, we need to do it, babe. Sorry. Um, you know, and it's just like, whoa, you know, and of course, <clears throat> you know, we all have our weaknesses. So if we can maybe look at this in a different way, right. If we can really redefine what you versus your promises is, and in order to win the battle between you versus your promises, you have to be willing to do what you promise and only promise what you're able to do. So if we can just re redefine that, if you're going to make a promise, then you're going to have to really say to yourself, can I really do this? And if I'm, if I'm really going to promise this, then I'm really going to have to be able to do this. There is no backing out. There is no turning away. Okay. And of course, no one wakes up one morning and decides, hey, I want to let a bunch of people down today. You know, I'm sure you don't wake up and say, I want to, I want to, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to let a bunch of people down. No problem. You know, how, how does that, how, how does it get that far? What would have happened if, despite the industry, um, 
or not the industry, but what, what would happen, you know, if you do did let a, a lot of people down? Of course, that's going to hurt you and it's going to cause that shame that we're talking about. So, um, you know, there's a ton of um, stories on this, of course, but uh, one of the stories I want to share with you is a guy by the name of Daniel Rodriguez. And I'll kind of close up soon here, but Daniel Rodriguez, I want to share this story. He um, joined the army just a couple of weeks after he graduated high school. He had no idea what war really was. He just wanted to get out of town. Okay, small town, wanted to get out of his town. And almost immediately, he was deployed to Iraq and eventually Afghanistan. He was miserable. On the battlefield, under a daily rain of sniper fire, he made a promise to his best friend. When I get out of this shithole, I'm going to play college football. After fighting in the infamous Battle of Kamdesh, as only one of approximately 60 Americans in one of the bloodiest battles in the Afga uh, Af Afghan conflict... He was awarded a Purple Heart and Bronze Star Medal with Valor. His best friend was not so lucky. Daniel returned home broken and stuck in the clutches of PTSD. But he remembered his promise. I felt that if I had any purpose in life, I needed to make sure that I kept my word to a friend and lived my life in a way that honored those who died. And that was just trying to live through a promise, Rodriguez said. He embarked on a grueling training regimen, and when he posted a video of his efforts, it went viral. By some mix of grit, determination, and the power of the internet, he earned a walk-on spot on the Clemson uh, University football team and went on to play in 37 consecutive games. And that's interesting because Clem uh, Clemson just won last night. Um, so uh, pretty cool, huh? So today, in addition to traveling throughout the country as a motivational speaker, he combines his football and military experience to run free football camps for kids from active duty military families. All of this because he was determined to make good on a promise. In general, how often do you make good on yours? Upholding a promise can be what keeps you going, okay? Have you ever wanted to quit something and then thought, but I promised? Remaining true to your word can become the essence of your commitment, your North Star. Staying loyal to what you said you were going to do long after the mood you said it has left you, finishing a project, doing an activity with your kids or family members, paying back a loan, sticking it out through the highs and lows of marriage is the essence of what it means to honor your word. When you don't, and think about this, when you don't keep a promise to someone, it ultimately communicates to that person that you don't value them. You have chosen to put something else ahead of your commitment. Even when you break small promises, others learn that they cannot count on you and tiny cracks start to develop in your relationships. And you are not only communicating all this to others, but you are also telling yourself that you don't value your own word. You think it's okay to let someone down to say something you don't mean or to fail to follow through on something you said you would do. Not keeping a promise is the same as disrespecting yourself. So again, New Year's resolutions, right? In 2017, 41% of Americans claim they um, did. From losing weight to doing more good deeds for others, statistics show that 72.6% maintain their promise through the first week. But that tapered off to about 44.8% of people hanging on after six months. Alas, only 8% maintain their resolution through the end of the year. While not keeping them as statistically normal and widely accepted, is there a disappointed piece of you that feels like you broke a promise and let yourself down? Okay. So I think we all are there. I think we can all understand how big a deal um, that not keeping your promises and what it can really do for your health and your relationships and really just your lifestyle. Um you know, Carl uh, Jung said, the man who promises everything is sure to fulfill nothing. <laughs> and everyone who promises too much is in danger of using evil means in order to carry out his promises and is already on the road to perdition. Is he exaggerating too much? Uh, not really. Look around. Uh, there's been major, major failures in businesses. And again, I can go on. And, and a lot of my book talks about some of these stories so that you can get really even more context of really where I'm coming from. So how do we, how do we you know, really redefine, you know, return, redefine, and repeat? 
here's 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 the close of this. I want I want you to just think about this. Is you need to repeat this. Don't talk, just act. Don't say, just show. Don't promise, just prove. Okay, this is what we need to repeat. This is your motto for 2019. Don't talk, just act. Don't say, just show. Don't promise, just prove. Okay, one more time. Don't talk, just act. Don't say, just show. Don't promise, just prove. That's what we need to do. I'd ask you to promise me, but let's not go down that road. <laughs> you know, let, 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 promise yourself that you are going to not just be talked this year, that your health is going to come more important than, you know, one of the most important priorities, that you're going to also take time to promise yourself a better life for yourself, whether it's your financial, your health, uh, maybe just saying no more because you believe in yourself more. You, you love yourself enough to say no, and you're not going to be everything to everybody because you're a people pleaser. And maybe you're a control freak and you're, you know, everything has to be done your way, but you're married to somebody that's opposite of that. You need to relinquish control. You need to not be that personality because again, where is that getting you? How, how is that helping you? How is that serving you? Um, some of that can serve you. Some of your drive, obviously being driven and being, you know, hey, I want things done a certain way. That That's not a bad thing, but just make sure you're not, you know, hurting the people around you because of that too much, okay? Build your credibility. Exceed your expectations. Warrant the trust of others, okay? Think, thinking of promises, that, think of this, think of promises as an extension of your integrity. You'll be selective about what you do agree to take on. So with that said, guys, thanks so much for being on here. Hey, if this is added value in any way to you, please take 30 seconds to give me uh, a five star on the podcast um, rating and definitely subscribe and share this with as many people as you'd like. It takes literally 30 seconds uh, to give this podcast a five star. Again, this is a new podcast. This was episode six. I really hope that you enjoyed it.